about essentially two classical presentations. Uh, the first one is in terms of ramified covers of the sphere. So I try to explain what, what it means. So on the right, you have, a, you have the sphere at zero. And you choose a, a, a surface of uh, any genus, for instance, uh, the torus. <coughs> We'll try to look at um, uh, covers of the sphere with multiple sheets. And it means the degree is uh, <coughs> strictly greater than one. So for instance, um, degree five. So what is a ramified cover? It's a, a continuous application from uh, SG to S0, such that if I pick a generic point on the sphere, it has precisely D, here five, uh, three matches. So that's an, a generic point, and it's not ramified. Meaning that if I, if I look at a small, <laughs> a small path um, touching this, this point, I will have five disjoint frame edges. <coughs> a ramification point is a point such that the, the frame edges are not uh, distinct. We have uh, some multiplicity somewhere. So here's a, an example of a simple ramification point. We only have uh, one special frame edge of degree two, the other one uh, uh, general. We may have uh, ramification points, uh, points of, uh, uh, of more complex types. For instance, this one has type 3, 2. We have uh, a degree 3 here and 2 here. We can have many ramification points with, uh, with uh, complex types. For instance, here the, the two vertices uh, each have two frame edges of degree three and two. So that's the, the kind of thing that uh, that uh, all this counting problem deals with. In very <coughs> general terms, uh, the problem is to count one type cover or some equivalent classes of, I won't explain more. Uh, ramified covers of S0 by sphere SG according to the types of the, the ramification points. So we fix the, the types and we would like to count the different ramified covers in the sphere. <coughs> the simple orbit counting pro problem, the original orbit counting problem, is the following. We choose one partition mu of uh, the degree d, um, and we want to count ramified covers of S0 by Sg with one, one complex ramification point of type mu and the other one uh, have to be simple. So this, this implies that the number of ramification points is related to, uh, to the degree of the, um, the ramified cover, the genus of the, the surface, and the length of the partition view. So the number of these ramified covers is, will be denoted the small h g of mu. Um, it can be a little uh, um, gener generalized. Uh, <coughs> 
<coughs> double of its counting problem. This time we, we pick two partitions, new and new. We want two spatial ramification points, one of type new and one of type new. <coughs> the other uh, still have to be simple. Again, we'll have a relation between uh, the number of simple ramification points and uh, the length of, of the partition and the genus of the, the surface. <coughs> so I will denote this with a small h g mu nu. A second classical point of view is um, in terms of products of permutations. And first, I will recall small, uh, a little definition that absolutely necessary. So the cycle type of the permutation is uh, the partition that gives the, the length of the orbits of the permutation. So for instance, if I look at this permutation written in linear, uh, uh, in linear mode, which is a very <coughs> bad idea, um, I look at the, the orbits, I see uh, I have three orbits, one has length four, one has length three, and one has one, so the cycle type of this permutation is four, three, one. So in <coughs> the, the simple orbits counting problem can be expressed uh, in the following way. We still have a, a partition mu of uh, an integer d. M is still the length of the, the partition. This time, we want to count transitive tuples of permutations, such that one of the permutations that has cycle type u, the prescribed partition. The other one are transposition. And we want that, uh, say, the partition, the permutation sigma is the product of the transposition. What does transit mean? Thank you. <laughs> so what, that, what does it mean? It means that um, we want that uh, the group generated by the permutations acts transitively on the, the integer 1 to d. In some way, we we'll see that the connexity condition for maps that we are um, here. This transitive uh, condition, uh, ah, just a small, uh, uh, a little uh, uh, <coughs> remark. I wrote uh, that sigma must be the product of the twice. I could have written things uh, otherwise since uh, actually uh, sigma is, and its inverse have the same cycle type, so uh, I could have written this, would have been exactly the same. Uh, so we can, you can you can see <coughs> the, two, the two formulations. So. Um, this transitivity condition implies actually that the number of transpositions has to be at least m plus d minus 2. Uh, it has the same parity, uh, meaning that we, we can define an integer g that will be called the genus. Uh, and so I, I will denote the big H of g. Uh, G of mu, uh, the number of such uh, such tuples. And uh, a well-known fact that I won't explain here is that uh, essentially uh, small h and big h are the same functions. Uh, the factorial b factor. Uh, can be understood as uh, the labeling of the sheets of the program. Uh, 
Nie jakby. No, że dobro jest spędzenie problemu, gdzie setting is that uh, we pick two <coughs> partitions and we always want to count transitive tuples of permutations start with two uh, non-trivial permutations of type cycle type new and new uh, again uh, as rho and sigma and the inverses and the conjugates are uh, all have new <coughs> New uh, and new uh, cycle type, uh, we, we could formulate this otherwise as the same. Okay. So again, we have uh, a condition on R, on R, uh, due to the transitivity. R is at least equal to m plus n minus two, where m and n are the lengths of the two partitions same same parity, so we have a genus, and uh, we do not see so that, and uh, we have exactly the same thing. So, um, what is called Ovid's formula, Z Ovid's formula is equivalent to, to this theorem. Um, it deals with uh, the symbol <coughs> of this counting problem in genus zero, meaning that if we deal with uh, permutations, we have a minimal number of transpositions. Uh, if we deal with, um, with ramified cover, we, we are looking at the ramified cover of the sphere by itself. <coughs> this theorem has uh, received many proofs. Uh, I will state some of them, but there are many others. The first one is probably <laughs> proved by Ovitz, um, by Ovitz itself, uh, which is ex essentially equivalent to the proof of Gooden and Jackson. They, they deal with uh, the, um, this setting. Ah. Uh, in terms of products of transposition, the idea is to um, understand the action of the multiplication by a transposition. Essentially, it may, it may either cut or join cycles. We can write an uh, equation and solve them. Get this form. Um, So I, like I say, there are many other proofs, uh, to my knowledge. Uh, none <coughs> of them really explain, except little this one, uh, really explain what, what is this, the, the, uh, explain the kind of terms that appear in, the, in this uh, formula. Uh, well, there are factorials, okay, there yeah. are flabbering things probably. But there is here and here terms that look like uh, number of trees, somehow scalar trees perhaps, uh, and they do not appear here, near, nor here, a little bit. Uh, so what I try to do is to obtain a, a Yeah, it is a bijective proof, but in a way indirect. I will try to uh, to explain a direct uh, bijective proof of this uh, this formula. Um, but first of all, I just the morning not really awaken. Uh, try to deal with a very simpler particular case. Um, we are in gene zero and the partition uh, mu has only one part. So uh, it means that we are uh, looking at the part the permutation that I uh, that is a large cycle, a D cycle. 
And the formula says that uh, H0 of D equals D to the D minus 2, which is precisely the number of field trees times a, a factorial. Um, so this is an, this must be, according to the formula, the number of all factorization of all D cycles into D minus 1 transpositions. This factor D minus 1 factorial is precisely the number of D cycles. This <coughs> means that any D cycle must have D to the D minus 2 factorization, which is the number of territories. So what I, what I want, but someone found D for me, <laughs> is a, a direct bijection between the factorization of one precise D cycle, say one, two, three, two D, uh, with skeletons. Um, so the proof uh, here is due to Moskovsky. Uh, first of all, you suppose you start with a Kelet tree, that is a tree with uh, usually we they are described as trees with uh, labeled vertices and unlabeled edges. Actually, this is probably not a good way to see them. So I will uh, push the labels on the edges. How do you do that? I, uh, do I do that? I, I, uh, I choose, for instance, the vertex with smaller label. Uh, as a root of the resulting object, and I, I push any label uh, along the path to this root vertex. Okay. I obtain this, so I have a root vertex, I have labels on the, the edges. That's clearly bit bijective, so this is another way to see characters. Actually, this Kelly tree is not drawn uh, uh, in any manner. Uh, well, if you look carefully, you will see that uh, I have chosen to uh, to to place the, the edges around any vertex, you know, around the each vertex, so that the the levels increase uh, in direct order. Of course, it cannot increase indefinitely. So I have a, on each vertex, I have a, what I call a descent, where uh, uh, the cyclic order is broken, of course. If we do this, um, <coughs> we can actually uh, uh, go for a walk around the tree and stop at each descent. Like something like that. Okay. And uh, we can see the we can see this uh, this object as uh, in fact um, the representation of the transposition, each each edge will be a transposition between the two vertices. Uh, of the edge, and it's two ends. The label on the edge will be the label of the the, the, the label of the transposition in, in the factorization. <coughs> and so um, I will be able to read the products of this transposition on this structure. For instance, if I look at the vertex here. Um, it is involved in only one transposition. So <coughs> if I apply all transposition iteratively, this vertex is not moved by the, uh, the three first ones. And what, when, I, uh, when I come to the fourth, uh, this vertex will be exchanged with this one. Here, I see that 
we have two other transpositions that, that affect this vertex, this vertex. But this one has already been performed, so not in threat. I'm not in threat in this one. But later on, I will act with uh, those seven, and my vertex will move. Yes. Where do you start? Ah, where do I start? So I said my territory with labels and edges. Uh, must have a, a root vertex to be equivalent to uh, vertex level uh, trees. So let us say I, I, I label this root vertex with Y. And uh, I know that the, this, this uh, product of transposition will, uh, will move one to this vertex. If I want to have as a as a product a cycle one two three, well, I have to put the two here, and then two will come here. So, so I, I have to put three here. And I, I turn around the tree and I will label all this. <coughs> uh, if I put the label one here, I clearly have. Uh, factorial d minus one uh, labeling possible labeling for the uh, for the other vertices. So we see that this particular territory can be uh, labeled in one way to obtain a particular d cycle, and it can be uh, uh, the 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 factor the factorial d minus one uh, labeling lead to the uh, all the cycles uh, in SD. So, why did I uh, show this to you? Why? Because this was uh, the uh, what? So this three equivalent to this factorization. But this is the, the starting point of a. First, by the team proof that we, we obtained uh, <coughs> for this formula. <coughs> Indeed, we uh, factorization can of any genus and uh, any cycle type can be uh, represented as generalization of these trees. Uh, planar maps, they are yeah, in genus zero. zero. Uh, with labels on the, on the edges that have the increasing condition that I had on, on my, uh, on my plane, uh, Uh, that I had on my uh, planar embedding on the, the skeletry. Um, so the, prob the, the simple of its problem can be uh, expressed as the, the enumeration of these increasing maps with uh, some particular uh, size condition. And we have been able to count these maps, and so we, we obtain the first bijective proof of a uh, of Ovid's formula. Uh, this bijection is <coughs> honestly I found it really really nice, really pretty. Um, it's quite simple. We obtain some three light three light structures, which are clearly enumerated by these numbers. So this is in, in some way a, a very simple proof once you have considered it. Uh, it has the, the particularity of using a, a general scheme that I, uh, I developed with an area bond. So the, the, the orientations we, we consider must, uh, uh, must have a 
specific uh, particularity that they must not have clockwise cycles. And actually, this has a, uh, a drawback, which is that we cannot define this, these orientations uh, in higher genus. So our quite pretty simple bijection uh, cannot be used to study uh, the general case of positive genus. And actually, even, even in genus zero, if we want to deal with double of its numbers, it's, it's not so, not so good. So, I will try to, <coughs> to explain another projection, which is much more intricate, but uh, that is, uh, that that extends absolutely naturally to double modus <coughs> number and to higher genus. So what will I look, look at? Uh, I will define what I, what I call Ovid's galaxies. So first of all, I, <coughs> I look at the sphere. I want in uh, the double uh, counting problem, I want two uh, complex ramification points, so let's say that <coughs> these are this, these two points, white and black. Uh, <coughs> I have some simple ramification points. I will uh, choose for them some uh, points on this uh, on this curve. Um, and actually, I, I will uh, look at the curve that, uh, that goes through the, the, the air simple ramification points. And that's it. I, I, I will choose these points and this curve so that uh, the white and the black uh, complex ramification points are uh, separated by this curve. <coughs> I will uh, uh, color the same sphere in black and the other one in white. Okay. And now I want to, to look at the, the full back of this drawing as on SG. Uh, well, I can even uh, uh, remove the, the two ramification points. I, I'm really interested in these two hemispheres with uh, the simple ramification points on the bottom. So for instance, uh, on, the, on the left, I, I may have something like that. Uh, what is it? Well, it's a, in this case a planar map, so my I drawing is in genus zero, but could be a, could be a higher. Um, so uh, I have some white and some black faces. Precisely, I have uh, <coughs> here. I have three black, uh, white faces and four black ones, and this gives me the length on the partition uh, that uh, describes the, the ramification of the, uh, <coughs> the two points. The two <coughs> um, more precisely, if I look at uh, the border of any face, I, I will see the the images of the simple ramification, the three images of the simple ramification points uh, in the same order here, at least once, and perhaps two times the sequence, or even uh, if I look at the face, the infinite face, white face, we have three times. 
three, three frame images for each uh, simple ramification. <coughs> so here I can say that this is a, a ramified cover of degree six, genus zero. I have five vertices for each shade of blue force because uh, these are simple ramification points. So if the degree is six, I have one uh, double point and, uh, and four simple points. <coughs> this means that on this map, uh, for each shade of blue, I have uh, four vertices of degree two and precisely one uh, of degree four. Uh, so that's true for the five shades. Um, the ramification over white and black are given up to a factor uh, uh, R uh, by the degrees of the corresponding faces. And so, uh, up to labelings, uh, routines, something, this uh, describes the ramified cover. Uh, I will use actually my uh, my orbit galaxies to explain what I did and explain at the beginning. Uh, why the ramified covers and the products of permutations really are the same. So and here I have a, a clear uh, correspondence between ramified covers and my my maps, my galaxy. Uh, if I want to to deal with the setting of permutations, um, well, um, <coughs> what can I do? Well, uh, suppose I am looking at this permutation row. It has a one, three cycle and two two cycles, and I like to represent graphically the product. Uh, of row by the ones and the twos and the three. Uh, if I uh, multiply row by the one, actually uh, I will send the pre image of one to four and the pre image of four to one. What does it mean on my uh, on my uh, Small, uh, small drawing. Well, um, here five goes to four, so it must go to one, and three goes to one, so it must go to four. So I can do something like that. And now on the border of my new object, five goes to one, <coughs> one uh, to three, uh, and change and three goes to four. So I will change the color accordingly. I want to multiply by one six, so this means that the, the frame image of one must go to six. <coughs> now the frame image of one is not three anymore, it's, it's five. So I want, <laughs> I want this. I, I want that five goes to six and seven goes to one. Now I, if I what I what I'm doing here is, is precisely the joint operation uh, that I mentioned earlier. Uh, I am joining these three cycles into one large cycle. And now if I want to, to multiply by this transposition, I will cut, <coughs> uh, I will cut uh, this cycle um, in this way. So <coughs> exactly the same operation as before. I want uh, the, the pre-image of two, <coughs> which is one, uh, goes to seven. And I want that the pre-image of seven, which is six, goes to two. But 
So now on my uh, my drawing, uh, uh, colors are totally useless. So I will uh, 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 remove the colors. Um, the colors of the edges, but not the colors of my blue uh, points, which are. Uh, which have the shades of blue that I used before to explain the first and second and third uh, ramification point on my, on my curve. Uh, so what will I do? Uh, actually, I will represent uh, the action of each of these three transpositions on each of the seven vertices, elements. Uh, so I will add uh, uh, I will add the missing uh, the missing uh, blue dots uh, in, uh, in uh, according to the order of this of the, this three transposition. So I obtain uh, something like that. And actually, this is not exactly what I had before, because uh, uh, I had no white vertices, no, no labeled white vertices. But actually, they are, uh, they are pretty useful, because um, these white vertices, I have B of them. And if I... Uh, Pick any one and say it's a root vertex. Uh, then clearly any uh, any any labeling of the others will give different objects. So I have with this uh, D white vertices. I have no no symmetry problem. <coughs> so what I will call orbit galaxies that are precisely this subject. I remove the, the labels because they, they don't matter. What uh, I know how, how many how many ways uh, I have to, to put them back. Uh, I mark one vertex, say the, the one with label one, and I, I say that these are the uh, small h with the breadth uh, of uh, mu nu. And I have a small lemma, it's quite, uh, quite easy. Edge um, <coughs> bullet times the labeling give me the factorization. And uh, and the, these galaxies, that is the covers, um, uh, multiplied by D, which is a the number of way of choosing, uh, adding one white vertex between the lighter and darker ver vertices on each border of each place, <coughs> and picking one of them to be the root. Uh, so this is equal to H to it. So uh, this gives back the relation between the big H and the small H. And so, um, <coughs> um, so actually, what what we have to count is this uh, this kind of objects. I call them orbit galaxies. I have, but they are bicolored maps with uh, uh, four plus one shades of vertices. That. Uh, that are in a precise order uh, around each face. Uh, I pick one white vertex to be the, the root vertex of the map. Uh, I have a precise number of <coughs> white vertices and other shades of vertices. I have a precise uh, phase degree distribution that is given by uh, mu and nu. Uh, to a factor because I, uh, I have 
each time I have a vertex of one shade that I hold the other one. So, uh, so these are the objects uh, that we have to count. And actually, I won't have the time to explain much more, but well, uh, first of all, we, we uh, orient canonically the edges uh, with the black face on the left. We look at the distance according to this orientation, which is uh, highly related to the shade of the vertex. Uh, of course, on each, around each face, we have at least one non geodesic edge. And uh, on, for each vertex, we have at least one incoming geodesic edge, meaning <coughs> that the non geodesic edge can then be uh, anywhere. Uh, so, for instance, here we have them, uh, there are Except for this one, they are necessary in to the vertices of the O4. Uh, here, is, uh, these, are, these are the, the red ones. If I keep on me the geodesic edges and I cut in a way on the vertices of the O4, I get a tree. And this <coughs> tree, I can use it to cut the surface. And well, I don't know if it's really understandable in one minute, but uh, what, I, what we get is a cactus, well, um, a, uh, a map with exactly one boundary, uh, which corresponds to the tree of the previous time. Uh, all vertices are incident to it, so this is kind of a tree, but this tree like. Uh, um, we have uh, color conditions, uh, the vertices along the boundary uh, uh, respect the shade, uh, a certain pattern uh, respective to the, sh to the shades. Well, this can be precisely described and actually this can be, uh, uh, this cat this can be contracted to get what we call mob mobiles that are really, are really that are more like tr like trees with, with polygonal vert vertices instead of vertices with label with on some edges and uh, weights on others and no no labels on all edges and weights on some edges <coughs> well there is a precise definition and there are At least in genus zero, with uh, new equal, equal to uh, no, no, yes, and new equal to the identity, uh, which is a simple of its problem setting. They are quite simple to to enumerate, and we get uh, well, this is uh, well, we get of its form. But more generally, we have this theorem that says that all its galaxies of a given type are in bijection with not directly these mobiles, but some equivalence classes of these mobiles uh, of the same type. And this is not only true for uh, new equal to the identity and g equal to zero, but it's true uh, in, in general. So um, we get uh, actually some consequences. Uh, we can we can define the skeleton of a mobile by contracting many things, and actually the number of mobiles and the description of mobiles that can uh, that have a given skeleton are uh, quite uh, uh, can be described, and we we obtain this theorem that says that well, I, I don't have new and new here because I allow compositions instead of partition. Well, we obtain that uh, an standardization of uh, of the numbers. 
uh, are given as an explicit, explicit sum uh, indexed by this skeleton, and it gives, in particular, it knew many polynomial unitary results. I want to talk about that. Thank you.